problem with them? Wow. Perfect. So for the next 20 minutes or so, we're going to walk you through a, a demonstration of what we mean by an immersive development environment. Um, and then after the demo, I have two more view graphs to kind of show you what's under the hood because I don't want you to walk away thinking it's just pretty pictures and videos and stuff like that. We'll actually show you kind of the engineering um, uh, that's under the hood. And feel free to ask questions uh, at, at any time uh, uh, throughout the presentation. So once again, I, I mentioned we successfully prototyped on the Advanced Air Dominance program. You're looking at one of the conceptual aircraft for, uh, for Advanced Air Dominance. Later on, you'll see another version of a different concept, and we have them both manned aircraft and unmanned aircraft. But once again, they're, they're notional aircraft, publicly releasable, is why we used them for this, uh, uh, this demonstration. So we're going to take you through four different scenarios, through the design cycle, through the build cycle, through the test cycle, and through the support cycle using this aircraft. And once again, even though I'm showing the entire life cycle, this is typically done way up front because you're getting all those disciplines involved early on to make sure from their perspective that this is the right, uh, the right design. So with that, let's start the design cycle. Okay, so the first thing you look at and say, well, first of all, what, what is it? It's a, it's, a, it's a main keel. The next thing you say, well, it looks like a CAD model, and we've been using CAD models for years, decades, so really what's so unique about this? Um, well, first of all, from the from the keel perspective, this actually drives a lot of the vehicle design. So your mission requirements like um, um, range and speed and things like internal payload requirements, those are going to drive your uh, fuselage length, which will in turn drive what your main keel length is going to be. Um, so once you've done some of that analysis to determine what some of those mission requirements are, you can start designing the vehicle. And one of the first things you do is lay this out. Um, and then you can start laying out additional structural elements. And you'll see them come up once again. You still think, well, it kind of looks still like CAD, although we've added this cool 3D features. Um, but it's really more than just the CAD model. Actually, behind the CAD model is all the mathematical information, geometrical information that can be used to manufacture these elements. So this is how we deliver model-based instructions out to the shop floor. So when you saw the F-18 flight line floor, this type of information is available down there on the shop floor um, for, all the, for all the parts and the tolerances. Um, so at this stage, you can make all the critical decisions like what type of materials to build this from, whether it's aluminum or titanium or, or, or carbon fiber composites. All those are put in here into the design phase. So, so what's different about this? Well, first of all, it's immersive. We've, we've taken the CAD model and you've added the 3D component to it. Now, a lot of folks say that's not required because as a designer who works in a CAD package every day, they have the 3D model in their head because they're constantly working on it in 3D and it kind of gets burned into your brain. But as a non-designer, we found that it's really helpful to see very quickly what this thing looks like in 3D and just a very short exposure to it and you get what it looks like. So because it's immersive, we can do things like looking at the uh, fuel, internal fuel concepts. You can start to analyze wet wing versus dry wing configurations. What are the, what are the pros and cons? Where would I even put fuel into the aircraft? Um, it, it's a very collaborative environment. So what you're seeing here on this screen in 3D could actually be piped anywhere in the world in 3D, and you could see it at your own location. So you can't do that on WebEx or NetMeeting today. Those are, those are very limited in what you can do for collaboration uh, across large distances and with large file size. Um, so this is really nice. Customers or suppliers at their own site can be able to see this and we can really have interactive, collaborative dis design discussions. Um, we can also, as we engage key suppliers like Propulsion, um, uh, we can work with them to lay out what, what's the propulsion train look like that you would lay out into this aircraft. And it's hard to see here. It's, I think can you can select it as possible. We've got a kind of, it looks like camouflage in there. Well. Okay, so, all right. so, and then the next thing is uh, landing gear, another key, uh, key element of design. Uh, the placement of the, of the gears um, would impact tip angle and that type of stuff. So we can, we can work that kind of dynamically. So it's getting very, very collaborative. People are visual. So it's hard to, you need to see what somebody's talking about. And this is the real way to see what, what, uh, what somebody's talking about. The next thing is it's interactive. This isn't just a CAD model. It has all the mathematical information behind it. So you can do things like 
suction cuts of the aircraft. So we were just talking about the propulsion train. You can do a suction cut right through the inlet and see exactly what the propulsion train looks like. And once again, it's in full 3D. I can move the suction cut. I can, I can, I can zoom in and, and really take a look at it. So it's immersive. It's collaborative. It's very interactive. Um, it's, not a, it's not just a movie that we're playing here. The next thing is it can be used for engineering analysis, and this is, uh, this is what we're, one of the things we're most excited about. So I'm going to switch here a little bit. This is a commercial aircraft wing, so you're not going to see this on the type of vehicle you have here. But one of the key things is, so you've got a wing design, you're wanting to do some aerodynamic analysis, um, especially when you deploy uh, 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 slats, what would that look like? Um, so once again, it's, it's a full 3D model. You can interrogate it. You can, you can deploy flaps or slats, uh, depending on what it has. And then you can actually turn on the aerodynamic analysis data on top of this model. So here's all the aero data now on top of the CAD model. And once again, it's a dynamic CAD model, so you can see the, the airflow over it. You can actually zoom in. You can, you can be sitting on top of the wing looking at the air coming at you. Um, so once again, it's, it's very immersive. And you can do all the section cuts you want and looking at finite element data or computational fluid dynamics or thermal analysis or acoustic or aero, and typically we'll take section cuts till you discover where a problem area is and you focus on that. Well, we found when you combine the analysis data with the CAD data, your eyes immediately gravitate to where the problem area is because it's, it's obvious. And then you can immerse yourself, and you can immerse all the appropriate stakeholders very quickly to decide what you want to do about that. So we think that we're very excited about this ability to combine your analysis data with your CAD data. So the next thing is, uh, is this is multidiscipline. So once again, as I mentioned, we can really integrate all of the stakeholders, all of the disciplines, whether it's aero, propulsion, mission systems, system engineering, ops analysis, finance, business folks. They can all be in this environment and, and weigh in on what the, what the design looks like. We've actually integrated uh, disciplines such as design for supportability, because as I mentioned, You'll lock in 70 to 80% of your life cycle cost, but you re really see a lot of that over your 20, 30 year aircraft life cycle and it comes in support costs. So you really want those engineers involved way up front making the right design decisions because you're going to live with that throughout the life cycle. We've also integrated design for manufacturing. So as you're out on the, the flight line, you can bring those industrial engineers and manufacturing engineers in early, weigh in on what's the best way to build this aircraft. Once we've once we figure out the optimal design, what's the optimal way to build that? And, and let's figure that out early versus once we're already starting to, uh, to build it. Um, so now let's take a look into the virtual build uh, cycle. 